This is our live stream, portable, on the go, whatever you wanna call it, solution. Everything in here, up, just like that. You wanna see? I wasn't kidding, I meant everything. So, in this guy here, Let's just start from the top. Locking connectors so these monitors don't wanna fall down while someone has their hands in here. That would be bad. We'll start from the connection points. SDI and XLR connections on the side here, okay? Uh, we have the two ATEM Mini ISO and an ATEM Mini Pro. We have our control laptop, our Pro Presenter laptop, and our three multi-views that can be used in any sort of fashion. Power cable sits right here. Pull that guy out, throw him into power, and we're powered. Now everything's gonna start booting up. I'll go ahead, I'll hit the uh, TV. It is a TV, not a monitor. TV on here. I'll uh, open these laptops here. And honestly, pretty much up. Everything's already wired together. A um, few things I should note. Uh, I do not travel with the laptops inside this thing. I, I do take them out, so I usually do plug them in. But for the purposes of this video, they're all wired up. Okay, and we're pretty much up. Um, let's go ahead and plug some cameras in as well. So I got two Blackmagic uh, 4K studio cameras over here. The reason I like these guys behind me is they uh, have SDI both in and out which means with the HD Studio Switcher I have underneath this guy, uh, I can do camera control at very, very long distances where you can't do that with just an A10 Mini Pro or an ISO or an A10 Mini. Um, so that's the, the good thing about SDI is it's pro grade and you have range when it comes to cable length. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug these guys in here. This one is camera seven. I have my uh, inputs and my output here. Perfect, so I have my camera seven, my camera eight sitting right here. I got my two cameras there. And then this is actually camera four, the output of this guy here, which is my ATEM Mini Pro ISO. I'll explain how I wired everything here in a sec. Let's just get fully set up. Um, ATEM software connected on the control laptop. Let's pull up Pro Presenter over here. Perfect. So, I'll show you the, the cool thing uh, about this rack here is we actually have more tech hiding underneath. So if I lift this guy up here, you can see that we have an HD studio. We have a Blackmagic HyperDeck for a backup program record. And then all the way over on this side, we also have a Blackmagic web presenter as a secondary USB output for a webcam. So that means we can stream with this guy to technically three different locations uh, with three different outputs uh, as well as be able to switch whatever we want to any of those outputs. That is a lot of capabilities in terms of streaming. We also get our program record, we get ISO records, um, and then we can have let's say eight different inputs and really expand on that by using the two ATEMs here as sub switches on top. So lots and lots of capabilities. Over here, I have Companion loaded up with our two stream decks. Um, this guy is really just letting me switch between different uh, sources here, right? I can switch between all of these guys. Um, and then over on my other stream deck, it's actually just controlling the ATEM Mini Pro ISO. The way I have it wired, is I have a program feed, an aux feed, and cameras seven and eight, all being routed into the A10 Mini Pro ISO. This is because the ISO can record all four of those sources individually. Cool, so I'm, I'm handling all of my ISO records as well as a program record in the A10 Mini Pro ISO. Then I have my backup program record in the HyperDeck as well. Always love my backups. The perks of being able to use the aux being sent into the A10 Mini Pro ISO is I can route the output of the ISO back into the switcher 
and basically use it as a sub switch. Now, that's not all that useful if I have the same inputs coming into the ISO as I am coming into the ATEM HD Studio. But when it comes to doing things quickly and wanting to switch between different camera angles and things like that, I can utilize the ATEM Mini Pro ISO's upstream key and I could maybe zoom in to a camera shot uh, farther than the zoom on the camera allows and then bring that into the HD Studio as a, another source. So I'll still have my Y shots here. So let's say that's camera 7 and I can go ahead and cut that and bring that onto program. But let's say I want to uh, bring camera 7 and I want to zoom into this shot but I don't have a cameraman because I'm doing a one-man show. No problem. I can simply pull it up over here. Uh, if I click on number three here, you see that that is the, uh, that is the camera seven shot in preview. Um, I can go ahead and take the aux input into this guy. I can set the aux to be camera seven. And then I can go ahead and start zooming in on that camera. Now, Brandon, but it's a multi-view. How do you get that as a clean feed into here? All of the A10 Mini Pro and ISOs have the ability to full screen your program feed. So now I'm going to full screen the program feed. I'm going to pull up camera four in my preview here. And notice I'll be able to zoom in to the camera here. And I can take that as another source. I can zoom in, out, wherever I want. And now I have a zoomed in shot. I have a wide shot that I could be taking as different feeds and things like that. Because it's on my aux output, I can switch that to be anything. Maybe I want it to be camera two, which is my pro presenter source. I can easily just go up here to aux, make it camera two, and now I can zoom in or out of camera two. Um, all without using the upstream key of the HD studio. So now I can do this with different boxes. I can still have a two box look and have one of them cropped in more than the other. Um, I can basically get a third camera angle, or not really an angle, but a third camera feed out of one of my cameras um, just by zooming into it and moving around within that shot. That's kind of how this is set up. So I obviously have multiple SDI outputs here coming out of the HD Studio switcher. So there's my program feed. Um, but I use the ATEM Mini Pro here as not only an encoder, but as a webcam output. The ATEM Mini Pro outputs in 1080p, which is good for streaming. The web presenter that's hiding underneath this guy, it only outputs in 720. Not great for streaming to things like Facebook, YouTube, Vimeo, places like that. Um, works well for Zoom though. So that's why I have it in here. A lot of times I'm sending a feed to let's say Zoom or GoToMeeting or uh, Google Meets or uh, what's the Microsoft Teams, right? 720 is usually pretty good for those conferencing softwares. But when we want to have a nice clean stream, you know, to, to any of the, the social media platforms um, or wherever our clients want us to stream, I like doing that in 1080. So that's why I have this guy. It can stream directly via Ethernet, which is good. Um, or I can plug it in to this guy. I can run OBS or Wirecast or something on here and stream while ProPresenter also runs on it. So I don't even need to add any more laptops just to stream, just to bring in a Zoom call, things like that. Um, with ProPresenter, you can do multiple outputs. So I can do a green screen and do overlays that way with one of my upstream or downstream keyers. Um, I can uh, have multiple outputs coming into here. So one could be a green screen or a key and a fill uh, or a key and a fill. So I need two more for that. One could be playback and then one could actually just be a Zoom call itself and display that, let's say, on TVs or something. Um, so that's super helpful there. Uh, the reason I have the two monitors on the left and the right, that is so I can monitor uh, not only what's being sent to the program feed, but also monitor the stream health. Uh, if 
I'm doing any records and the audio. So if I go back here to my multi-view, uh, notice I have a uh, Samsung T5, uh, one or two terabyte SSDs usually plugged in, um, and I can monitor the record status to make sure that I am recording all my ISOs as well as my program feed um, just on there. I usually end up hiding it, but I like to be able to check on it whenever I need to and make sure that my audio is coming in nice and clean. Okay, so that's pretty much this guy here. Um, everything is, is pretty clean. The only things that need to be seen are seen. Um, and anything that can be hidden and hide away underneath is. Um, this helps so much. It used to take us maybe two hours to make sure everything was wired the way we wanted to with our multiple ATEM minis, with sub switches, things like that. We do this on site every time. Um, never really had an issue getting it all up, but it did just take a lot of time. And I was always worried that I wired something wrong or that something wasn't gonna work or I thought I checked this and I didn't. So having it already wired, ready to go, I know it's always gonna turn on the same way. Um, I can set macros and you know the IP addresses are always gonna stay consistent. Um, and yeah, I can just get up and now 15 minutes instead of it takes an hour hour and a half just to put everything out um, and make sure it's wired and do all my checks. I can do everything in about 15 minutes now. Um, is it heavy? Yes, it's freaking heavy. The good thing is we usually standardize on two people for all of our live streaming gigs. One as a cameraman uh, and another one as the tech to run kind of all the switching. Um, so with a two person lift, it's not a problem at all. Uh, one person, kind of heavy. I can pretty much get it up onto the table, um, but having it with, uh, with two people definitely helps. Um, and yeah, it's fast, which I like. So that's the whole setup here. And then obviously tearing down is just as fast. Close the laptops, pull them out, unplug everything, close it, and you're out. So hopefully you like that. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments. Um, we'll try to answer as many, and if we get a, a bunch of them, we'll do a whole nother video just answering your guys' questions about this setup. So thanks for watching, and please subscribe. Thanks.